So osmosis has some really important implications for cells. The cell membrane is a semi-permeable membrane, and so the cell membrane can allow osmosis to occur. So what happens if we actually drink salt water? The water that's floating around in our bloodstream is now going to have a higher percentage of salt, so a lower percentage of water than inside our cells. And what that's going to do through osmosis, the salt is going to want to go in the cells, but it can't. So instead, the water inside our cells, the higher concentration, is going to move out. And so if you drink salt water, you're actually going to get more dehydrated. You're going to pull water out of your cells just by osmosis. So what happens to plant roots when we put their roots in pure water? Well, the water concentration outside the cells is now higher than inside the cells. Uh, cells are typically going to have 1 to 3 percent salt solutions. And so the water is going to rush in. And at first that might sound bad, but they have these strong cell walls that can keep the cells intact. And that water pressure helps the leaves stay nice and turgid. So here we can look at an example of what happens when you put plant and animal cells into different solutions. So an isotonic solution is a solution that has the same salt concentration inside and outside. And so water is going to move in and out in equal amounts, and that's going to leave our blood cells just the way we want them. Plant cells, they're going to be kind of happy, but plant cells actually prefer hypotonic solutions. And those are solutions that have more water and less salts or dissolved solutes in them. For a plant cell, as I just described, that's going to plump them up. They're going to fill up with water, but the strong cell wall is going to keep them intact. For our cells, that's going to cause them to explode. We don't have that nice uh, cell wall to protect our cells. So if you put red blood cells in pure water, they're not going to survive, and that's actually quite dangerous. So when you go into the hospital and get a uh, IV, that IV is not pure water. If that was pure water, you would actually do severe physical harm to the individual. A hypertonic solution is a solution that has lots of dissolved salts and a much lower concentration of water. And what that's going to do is actually suck the water out of the cells. For animal cells, they're going to shrivel and shrink. For plant cells, something called plasmolysis is going to happen. The cell wall is going to remain intact, but the cell membrane is going to shrink away, and all of the water in that big central vacuole is going to be sucked out. And so hypertonic solutions, salty solutions, are dangerous for both kinds of cells. Sometimes you're going to need to move very, very large molecules into or out of a cell, and they're not even going to fit through an embedded protein. So these are the processes of endo and exocytosis. Again, a few Latin roots. Cyte, we're going to see this one over and over again. This refers to a cell. So a cytologist is someone who studies cells. Here we have a process, cis, involving cells. Exo means outside, and endo means inside. So exocytosis is a process of moving things out of a cell, and endocytosis is a process of moving things into a cell. Again, this is going to work for molecules that are too big for regular protein transport channels. This is a process that's going to require energy. Endo means into, exo means out of. So here we have a large food particle that we want to move into the cell so we can digest it. That food particle is going to bump into the outer cell membrane, and the cell membrane is going to pinch in and fold around that food molecule and pinch off. And once it pinches off, it's now inside the cell, and this is a vesicle, and it's containing this food particle. This vesicle is going to move to a lysosome, and because they both are surrounded by a cell membrane, the cell membranes can merge, and we'll end up with this food particle mixing with all of the different enzymes. It's going to break down the food particle, 
and now those products can be released for the cell to use. Maybe some of them are waste, and those waste products we want to get rid of, we're going to carry out to the outer cell membrane, and this vesicle will merge with the outer cell membrane and release the products. So here, this merging of a vesicle to the outer membrane, this is exocytosis the bringing in of a large piece of food from the outer cell membrane and pinching in is endocytosis. And this illustrates sort of an interesting concept about cell membranes in cells. The individual phospholipids are actually continually moving from being part of the outer cell membrane to being part of the cell membrane in a vesicle, to being part of a lysosome, another vesicle, and back out into the cell membrane. All together it's called the endomembrane system, and the outer cell membrane is always getting bigger or smaller as these pieces are being added or taken away. There is not a net overall change, but there's a constant shift that's going on. So this video is a nice illustration of how endocytosis and exocytosis might work, and they also show how those phospholipids can merge from one organelle to the next.